to the third and final of our introductory talks on the module. Uh, in the second talk, if you've listened to it, um, you'll know that I, I sort of slightly lamenting the fact that the project is meant to be something that's fun and exciting and something you enjoy doing, but yet a lot of the, the second talk was, was about doom and gloom. It was about um, students being in difficult positions. It was about automatic module failure and other not so positive things. Um, so it's always good to end on a, a high note, a positive note. And that um, doesn't all explain why this final introductory one's entitled Unpleasant Truths, where we're going to end by looking at also some more difficult aspects that the module is likely to put you in. So um, apologies. Uh, most people do enjoy the module. Um, you know, this introduction maybe wouldn't suggest that, but it is true. Uh, for many students, and arguably most, uh, different aspects of this module are likely to put you in situations that are not comfortable, that are outside of your comfort zone. And depending on your perspective, the distressing thing is, this is by design. This is what I hope to achieve. And there's reasons for that. And it really comes down to, to ones of, of, of learning. Uh, if you think about learning, you can learn at different speeds. And if you do something that you find very straightforward and easy, there's not likely to be much learning happening with that. Equally, if on the end of the spectrum, if you're encountering or trying to do something which seems impossibly difficult, again, there's maybe not much learning with that. But there's a sweet spot. And that sweet spot is where things are maybe just slightly uh, challenging, a bit difficult, not not easy, to, struggling a bit. That's the sweet spot in terms of being able to, to maximise the rate, the speed at which you learn. So there's going to be a few things in this module that, that will challenge you, um, with good reason. But I want to flag them up front so that you can um, have a look at them, you can see them. Uh, so the first one, dropping you in the, the, the deep end. Um, what you need to accomplish by the end of this module may seem very daunting from your perspective at the start. So the module, at the very start of the module, we talk about what it is you will have to do at the end of the module in terms of having created a gaming app. Um, we talk about assessment being based on that, being worth 100% of module credit. We've talked about the consequences of failing the module. So anytime people are in a position where they're told you must do this and here are the consequences of not doing that and at the start of the module if you're sitting thinking I don't know how to write an app, I don't know if I'll be able to do this, it is a perfectly normal natural human behaviour to be slightly fearful, to be worried, to be apprehensive um, because you need to do something and there's an important consequence turning on you doing that something. But if you don't know that you can do it at the start point, then that can introduce a bit of worry. So don't, don't be at all bothered if, if you feel that way, because it's just natural to feel that way. A um, few things I can say. The best way of actually overcoming that is, is, believe it or not, is actually to start coding, to start doing this. And you'll very quickly, well, not very quickly, it'll take some time, but you will realise, hey, I can do this. I know I'm on track. I'm, I'm not at all worried about it. The hopefully one reassuring thing I can say, and, and we'll look at in, in lecture, uh, we'll have a look at some previous examination profiles. Um, if you apply yourself, basically you will be able to do it. You will pass the module. Um, so it, it is without doubt within the capacity of basically everybody on the module. So it's fine to feel worried about it at the front, but don't worry, you can do it. Uh, the second thing, this, this actually can, um, combined with the first one to make it overall a little bit more scary. Your expectations may be overly demanding. So basically, I think it's safe to assume you've been playing games. Um, so you know about games. You can critique games in terms of things that you like or don't like, and you can use exactly the same form of critiquing on your own game. The one thing to bear in mind is that the games that you've played, probably in the most, have been created by teams of professional developers. People who've been developing for potentially decades, often in large teams, often with very significant budgets. Uh, so it's a rather different environment to the one you'll find yourself 
in uh, potentially creating your first Android game with a bunch of your fellow students. So just be cautious about benchmarking what it is you want to do and how you're doing against proper commercial published professional stuff. Um, it actually was within the grasp of a lot of teams to reach that standard, but you, know, you don't have to. This is not, the module is not assuming that it is going to be something of professional quality in terms of what you could sell on the App Store or whatever at the end. If you can do it, brilliant, by all means, try to do this. But just be wary, careful uh, that your own expectations may be on the upper end, um, slightly too demanding. There's likely no clear finish line. Uh, there'll be no clear finish point where you can say your game is finished. There will always be some extra features to add or something that can be improved. Uh, so this is not a, a fixed assignment where you're given three problems and asked to solve those problems and you can say, I've tried it, I've now finished. It's an open-ended project. Uh, there will be any number of things you can add in. And this is good because we have a fixed amount of time and you can keep adding things in up until the point of submission. So you're not going to be sitting around twiddling your thumbs. There'll always be stuff you can add in. I make full use of the mark range, um, which means to say that there have been people who've done nothing in the module, and I've got zero. And over the years, there's been a number of people that have actually got 100% on the module. And there's been some people, if I could, I would have given more than 100% on the module. So because you can keep adding in, you can keep developing, you can keep improving, um, the mark that you get is not really, well, it's constrained by 100%, but that's the only constraint. It can go as high um, all the way up to, to 100%. Um, so in that sense, just be cautious that to, to a degree the project can be a black hole in terms of sucking up every single moment of your available time if you put it into it. You need to balance the thing uh, between your other commitments. Um, but arguably it's in your benefit um, that you can keep adding things into the point of submission. The final point we have here is purposefully making your life difficult. Uh, it says here, I want to put you in situations where there's no clear way forward, where there are different approaches, uh, some of which will not work, and you have to decide which is best for your project. So in other words, I want to put you in situations where maybe you don't know how to implement this. There's no obvious answer. You've done a bit of investigation and you find different techniques. Some of them may work, may not work. Um, so you're in a situation where you have to use your judgment to decide what is likely to be the best way forward. You can't be certain. Um, the decisions you make, you get them right sometimes, you'll get them wrong other times. So I want to be in that situation. It's not necessarily a comfortable situation. Also, as mentioned, there are no weekly practicals on this module. Uh, so these are things that you will be doing yourself. There's no holding of hands, so to speak. Uh, as a reminder, the reason we're doing that is that this is how software development works in the real world. Um, you will, in your placement year, at the end of the second year, get in placement, you will find yourself in exactly the same situation where you have to do it, you have to make decisions, you have to rely upon your judgment. That's what programmers do. Um, so I'm putting you in that situation now, even though I know it is a challenging position to be in because it will help prepare you for your year out. The thing I can offer by way of recompense on this is that when it comes down to assessing it, because I know I've been a bit nasty, um, I'll be a bit more gentler when it comes to assessing it. I'll not be as demanding in the assessment because I know I've put you in a thoroughly difficult position. So overall, the things will... Uh, will happily balance out. The final bit we have here, it's not all doom and gloom, so actually we will end on a, a positive note at the end. If you apply yourself and put in the time and effort, you will pass. That's the reality. And not only pass, you will score well. And I'll show you the statistics that, that more or less prove that. Um, when the cohort engages, failure rates in the module actually are very low. And if you look at the percentage of firsts in the module, they actually are, in comparison to other modules, relatively high. And the simple reason for this is that previous cohorts have engaged. They've put in the time and effort. They've worked hard. And, and that's, that's the simple solution to, to doing well. So if you do that, success, high marks, they will uh, most probably follow. Uh, so key takeaways in this is only one. Uh, there's the Slightly Unpleasant Truths document, which talks a little bit more about the things I've mentioned here. 
do have a read of it. More importantly, have a think about it, bear these things in mind and ask, well, what are you going to do about these things through your project?